Welcome to the Genetic Counseling Flipbook tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide you with basic genetic concepts. This may be useful as you read information throughout openingautism.com where more complex genetic concepts are discussed. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells. Generally, each cell contains 46 total chromosomes. These chromosomes come in pairs where 23 are from the mother and 23 are from the father. In this picture, called a karyogram, we have colored one of each pair pink and the other blue to help show that one of each pair comes from each parent. The first 22 pairs of chromosomes are called autosomes. These are the same in females and males. The 23rd pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes and males have one X and one Y chromosome. The genetic information provided by the sex chromosomes determines a person's gender. Chromosomes are made up of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. DNA, which is thought of as the blueprint for the genetic code, is made up of four letters. A for adenine, G for guanine, T for thymine, and C for cytosine. These are also called bases, or nucleotides, and are the chemical components that make up DNA. Naturally, DNA occurs in a twisted ladder shape called a double helix that is shown here. The double helix fits together because A binds with T and G binds with C. These bound pairs are called base pairs. Altogether, the 46 chromosomes contain about 3 billion base pairs of DNA. On average, each chromosome contains hundreds of genes. Genes are parts of DNA that work together to help guide a part of human growth and development. Altogether, the 46 chromosomes contain thousands of genes. Some genes work alone, while others must work together. For example, there is one single gene that determines a person's blood type, while multiple genes work together to determine a person's height. These end results, like blood type and height, are called traits. Genes provide instructions for the creation of proteins, which is how they control our traits. There are many types of proteins. Some make up our structure and others allow us to function. For example, some genes provide instructions for the creation of collagens. Collagens are proteins that form our bones and muscles. Other genes provide instructions for the creation of insulin. Insulin is a protein that controls levels of blood sugar. In general, every person has the same genetic code or the same order of bases. We are each 99.9% .9 the same. However, some bases naturally differ. These variations lead to different proteins, which make us all unique. These unique traits include things like hair and eye color, but also determine whether a person has a medical condition. For example, there may be variations in genes that provide altered instructions for the creation of collagen. This could lead to brittle bone disease. Or there may be variations in the genes that provide instructions for the creation of insulin. This could lead to a higher risk for diabetes. Genetic tests are designed to identify genetic variations that are known to cause or be associated with medical conditions. There are many different types of genetic variations, including chromosomal changes, duplications, deletions, methylation abnormalities, and others. Chromosomal changes occur when an entire chromosome is duplicated or deleted. Or, in other words, there is an extra chromosome or one is missing. Duplications occur when portions of DNA are copied and reinserted into the chromosome. Deletions occur when portions of DNA are missing. Methylation is a normal process that chemically changes the DNA. Errors in methylation may cause genes to be abnormally turned on or off. Point mutations occur when there is a change to a single base pair in the DNA. Gene expansions occur when a specific part of a gene becomes repeated or duplicated many times. Major chromosomal changes occur when entire chromosomes are duplicated or deleted. For example, having an extra copy of chromosome 21 leads to Down syndrome. The medical term for this diagnosis is trisomy 21 to reflect that there are three copies of the chromosome. Lacking a copy of the X chromosome leads to Turner syndrome. This condition only occurs in females because males must have a Y chromosome in their 23rd pair. Copy number changes, or CNCs, are duplications or deletions within chromosomes. 
A duplication occurs when a portion of DNA gets copied and is reinserted into the chromosome. A deletion occurs when a portion of DNA is missing. These changes range from a few bases to millions of bases. These may also be called copy number variations, or CNVs. As briefly mentioned earlier, genes can be turned on or off by a normal process called methylation. In some situations, it is important to know if a gene is methylated or turned off, as this helps to determine whether a person has a condition or which condition they have. Because this is a complicated concept, it may help to discuss a real-life example. There are certain genes on the copy of chromosome 15 from dad that are normally methylated or turned off. Alternatively, those same genes on the copy from mom are not methylated or are turned on. If a person happens to have a deletion on the copy of chromosome 15 inherited from mom, he or she would be missing the instructions from those genes. Remember, they are turned off on the copy from dad. This leads to a specific diagnosis called Angelman syndrome. Other DNA variations include base pair changes, such as point mutations. A point mutation occurs when a single base pair change can alter the meaning of the gene instructions. This, in turn, can lead to an abnormal protein and perhaps a change in the trait. Another type of DNA variation is gene expansion, which occurs when a specific part of the gene is repeated or duplicated many times. This can also alter the meaning of the gene instructions, which, in turn, can lead to an abnormal protein or perhaps a change in the trait. When discussing basic genetic concepts, it is important to review inheritance patterns. These describe the way in which conditions may be passed from one generation to the next. Remember, we generally have two copies of each gene one on the chromosome copy from mom, and one on the chromosome copy from dad. We will use these images as several inheritance patterns are reviewed. A blue chromosome is inherited from the father, and a red chromosome is inherited from the mother. Colored bands on the chromosomes will represent genetic variations. A character with only an outline represents a person who does not have symptoms. A filled character represents a person who does have symptoms and a character that is half-filled represents a person who is a carrier for the condition. Carriers have the genetic variation and may pass that on to their children, but they do not have symptoms themselves. Autosomal dominant inheritance is one type of inheritance pattern. A variation on only one of two gene copies will lead to the condition. In order to have an autosomal dominant condition, that variation can be on either the chromosome from mom or from dad. Remember, Autosomes are the first 22 chromosome pairs and are the same in both genders. Autosomal dominant variations may be new in the child or may be inherited from one parent who also has the condition. If a person has an autosomal dominant condition, there is a 1 in 2 or 50% chance for each child of that person to also have the condition. Autosomal recessive inheritance is another type of inheritance pattern. A variation on both gene copies will lead to the condition. With this inheritance pattern, parents of a child with the condition are called carriers. In most cases, neither parent has the condition. Since autosomes are the same in both genders, both males and females can have an autosomal recessive condition. X-linked inheritance is another type of inheritance pattern. These conditions are associated with genes on the X chromosome. Remember, females have two X chromosomes and males have only one. For this reason, conditions associated with X-linked genes most often affect males. If a female has a variation on one of her gene copies, she has a second backup copy. However, if a male has a variation on his only gene copy, he will have the condition. These conditions can be new in the child or inherited from a parent. If a father has an X-linked condition, each of his daughters will inherit the variation. This is because fathers pass their X chromosome to daughters and their Y chromosome to sons. If a mother carries an X-linked condition, each of her children will have a 1 in 2 or 50% chance to inherit the variation. Remember, daughters with the variation are not often affected and are usually called carriers. Lineagen's First Step DX combines two genetic tests, chromosomal microarray analysis and fragile X testing. Two samples are taken from the person being tested during a single blood draw. These are used as a source of DNA which is then used for genetic testing. CMA is a high-resolution chromosome test. 
it can detect small deletions and duplications that cannot be detected by other chromosome testing methods, such as standard chromosome analysis. Lineagen uses the CMA with the highest resolution that is currently clinically available. This picture helps illustrate the process. The microchip, or array, contains millions of genetic locations, and each of those has millions of synthetic DNA strands. When a person's DNA is placed on this microchip, his or her DNA will bind to the DNA on the microchip. This allows us to compare a person's DNA to the synthetic DNA. We can then detect if the person has missing or extra DNA. Additionally, we can detect what specific DNA or what location of the genome is different. Possible results from First Step DX are shown here. Lineagen aims to help in the evaluation of children with developmental disorders, including autism spectrum disorder. There are times when the results are not straightforward. In these cases, you may speak with a genetic counselor provided by Lineagen. Overall, results may be normal, abnormal, or unknown. It is important to know that these labels refer to the results of the test itself and not to the person being tested. Fragile X syndrome occurs when there is an exceptionally long expansion of a portion of FMR1, which is a gene on the X chromosome. This expansion generally causes the gene to be methylated or turned off, which causes the condition. The pictures shown here illustrate what a normal FMR1 gene should look like. It also shows what happens when the region is expanded into a premutation and into a full mutation. Lineagen's genetic testing for Fragile X syndrome is done in two parts. A screen is performed to see if there is a gene expansion above the normal range of 5 to 54 CGG repeats or triplets. Remember, each letter represents one nucleotide or base. If there is no expansion, the test is considered normal. If there is expansion, the sample will then be tested for the specific repeat number and methylation status. If you and your doctor decide genetic testing using Lineagen's First Step DX is the right choice for your family, your doctor must order the test. The requisition form has to be signed and completed by the doctor, as well as the person being tested. If the person being tested is a child, a parent or guardian must sign the form. Before ordering Lineagen's First Step DX, both the ordering doctor and the person being tested must confirm that they've received information about the purpose, risks, benefits, and limitations of the test. If the person being tested is a child, a parent or guardian must sign the form. The results of Lineagen's First Step DX may be available as soon as three weeks after the blood draw. They will be included in a binder with easy to read information for your doctor and your family, including some guidance for the next steps you may choose to take. Lineagen provides genetic counseling services and also has a clinical services group who are committed to helping you understand the meaning of the specific results.